Happy Thumbs Gaming. We shall. Hey everybody, it's Brian with Happy Thumbs Gaming. Today we have another LEGO Dimensions video for you. This one happens to be the Midway Arcade Story. That's right, we're going to go ahead and take on the story mode of this. We are going to get a trophy achievement for completing the level called New High Score. We're also going to shoot for that Rule Breaker requirement, which we do have our 2x red brick turned on, so it makes it pretty easy. There's quite a few blues and poiples scattered throughout the level. And to be completely honest, we had a game freeze, so we got the trophy and the game froze, and... And unfortunately, we couldn't go back and unget that trophy. So, uh, although we do get the rule breaker in this video, we do get a couple of gold bricks one for completing the level, one for getting that rule breaker. We do not get the trophy in this video. So, uh, you'll more than likely get it by playing it. But, uh, all right. So, here you can see here we are at the Vorton portal and we have the Midway Gamer here, the, the Gamer Kid. And uh, we're going to go ahead and sip some of that Kool-Aid. Actually, no, I'm just kidding. He has multiple abilities, and you can simply tap the circle or B button, and it'll kind of cycle through the different abilities, as you can see here. And then you, uh, when you find the one that you actually want, you press and hold that circle button, and he'll sip on some drinkage and change his T-shirt, and uh, you'll get that power. So uh, once you're ready to go ahead and get things rolling, we'll go ahead and select Retro Wreckage from the level select here. And it's uh, kind of, it's the next in line after all of the story or starter pack based stuff right after the, uh, the mystery portal there and uh, right before the Ghostbusters level. So we selected that. We're going to go ahead and jump in. And we actually start things off once we stop falling. We actually find ourselves in a nice little cutscene. So we've officially been sucked into the arcade, and I will be honest, it's not the first time that's happened. And, oh, look at this. We've got this little wizard guy here, and he says, Greetings, mortal. Uh, you're a slow reader. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, as you can see, the evil powers have possessed the heroes, and once they've of uh, these once beloved video games, the entire world needs your help setting them free. You must find a way to banish them from, what, banish the taint? I don't know if I like where this is going. i got to be honest. But, uh, all right, I'm going to try to read those as I go along. I have sped this video up ever so slightly, and although I knew that while I was recording and allotted a little extra time kind of standing there letting him talk, uh, it apparently wasn't quite enough. So, uh, first things first, there are some studs to be found by simply doing some butt slams. And again, we can cycle through all the different abilities by pressing the circle or B button, and uh, then simply press and hold that same button you were cycling through in order to activate that power. So here you can see I've activated the heat ray, and I've got my laser beam going crazy and destroyed all that stuff. It saved me a few extra butt slams. The tailbone was getting a little sore, if you know what I'm saying. And uh, all right, so here we need to go uh, not invisible. He actually can see us when we're, it's weird that he can see us even though we're invisible, but uh, we need to go invincible. So close, but no cigar on that uh, first drink there. So, all right, just run up, get up close and give it the old pow right in the kisser. It'll go ahead and fall to pieces and it'll give us a cycle that we can stand on and press the icon indicated. This is gonna go ahead and take us through the build instructions for that and look at that, we were quickly, making our way through that. Actually, we skipped all the way through that. We didn't want to waste your time with that. If you guys want the build instructions, buy the game! No, I'm just kidding. You guys could always request that. We uh, we thought about putting some videos out with the different, uh, you know, Lego piece instruction builds there, but uh, we weren't sure if any of you guys cared because uh, most of the people that have this game have the instructions, and uh, the ones that don't have it, I don't know if you would want to or have the pieces needed in order to build a lot of these, but uh, if it's something you want, let us know in the video description down below. All right, you can see we have built up the Spy Hunter. What is it, the G155 or the 61G15, something like that, and uh, we've gotten on the old car ramp there, and we uh, car ramrodded it all the way through. We filled up that meter, and check it out. Now we have another Soikle in the back corner, but speaking of back corner, behind 
behind the desk there, there's quite a few bluesies. And I try to do a little pass here, and, <laughs> and I ghost rode the, the old whip, and it went right back where I couldn't uh, access the circle, so I had to move it again. But, uh, ooh, this circle is for the arcade machine, or cabinet, if you will. And uh, we're going to go ahead and place our toy tag there and build that. Again, we have removed those instructions so uh, we don't waste any of your time. And uh, this one, you got to go ahead and uh, approach it just like you would a normal vehicle and hit the triangle or Y button to access it. Ride it on over to the arcade panel there and access it by pressing circle or B. And look at that. We got Spy Hunter. This is actually one of my most favoritest of Midway games. Uh, I actually struggled big time playing this game as a child. And I'm going to actually spend some time as an adult and see if I can maybe get past. There were some bridges and some helicopter. The helicopter was always the demise for me. And anyways... Uh, um, all right, so the controls are a little funky, especially with new age controllers. Um, and you certainly want to avoid those black and red cards. I don't know if that's like a skull on the hood or whatever, but um, anyways, uh, w w the goal here, I believe, was what, 3,000? I, I should have paid more attention to that. My bad. It actually stated right in the beginning uh, the score we needed to get to. And uh, I eventually get there. And, and of course, some of you uh, may find yourselves crashing and banging and booming, and you might have to play this a, a time or two. But, um, you know, stick with it. You have to beat these little mini games in order to advance and complete this level. So, um, yeah. Uh, the motorcycles, as well as the blue vehicles, don't cause you any harm and they don't give you any points. So. Uh, you, you, I shouldn't say don't cause you any harm. If you go high speed, like I just shifted into high gear there and went blammo right into the back trunk, and uh, yeah, that wasn't good. But uh, all right, here we go. I've got a weapons truck or weapons van, even though it's even though it's clearly a truck pulling up. And now, guess what? I get an oil slick for this one. So I tried to uh, puke out some some oil slick there, but my timer actually gave me enough points because you actually get points for uh, just simply driving as well. So I chose not to play any more of that game, and I'm going to do that for all of the mini games. I'm just going to simply get to the first bronze trophy or bronze medal, I guess it is, and uh, we're going to go ahead and roll out and complete the level itself rather than uh, getting sucked into these little mini games. So. Uh, once you get each of these complete, it does puke out some studs, and it'll also uh, cue a green light, as you saw above that elevator entrance there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get all those. But hey, did you know that Spy Hunter was, the first, was first released in arcades in 1983? It is said that Spy Hunter was originally made to... Gosh, again, not fast enough. If you need to know what it says, go ahead and pause it and read it yourself. <laughs> I don't know why I'm in such a shisty mood today, but... Anyhow, uh, here we go. We got to drink some more of that Kool-Aid. This time we actually have to drink the invisibility. No, which one we need? I think we do need the invisibility. I think that's the one we go for, isn't it? Wait for it. Wait for it. I just cycled past it on accident. So, yeah, invisibility. So, I, I guess you got to confuse this guy or sneak up on him. And then we got to give him the old cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. So, uh, it'll it'll uh, give you the old berserk or ro is it Robotron? I guess it's Robotron, huh? The Robotron uh, level completion there. Uh, every time you complete, I think you have to do this four times. So uh, move quickly. You might have to drink uh, two invisibility drinks in order to get that completed. But I was lucky enough to get it done in one. Look at that! A couple of butt slams on. Was that some foosball? Foosball! Foosballs for the devil! Ha <laughs> Anybody know what that movie's from? Most of you probably do. Anyhow, uh, we got an arcade uh, little terminal here, and it's for Robotron. What is that? 2014. That's in. It's supposed to be futuristic, but it's clearly in the past. No, 2084. That's a long time in the future. And look at that. We need 10,000 points. Now, keep in mind, this was uh, one of the first arcade games that I was aware of that actually had a diagonal fire capability. So you can fire up, down, left, right, uh, but you can also fire in diagonal motions. You can see some of my bullets. I didn't focus too much on that. I was very, uh, you know, upsy daisy, lefty righties. And oh, by the way, if you save some innocent bystanders around the level, it does give you quite a few points. And I think that's probably the best way to get that 10K quickly is to uh, save as many of those innocent people as possible. So they're like mini figs in peril. So you can see I got a thousand for that one. I got two thousand for another guy. Uh, I don't know who that was uh, down there. But anyways, oh, 10,000 points. Arcade.complete. I got that bronze medal. We're going to go ahead and keep on keeping on. And all right. So we got two of the, what, six? No, eight. How many? Let's see. Oh, two, four, six. That's right. All right. I can count. I can count. 
And all right, here we go. We got this. Did you know that Robotron 2084 was first introduced to arcades in 1982? In total, there are 40 enemy waves hard coded into the game. After wave 40 has been completed, waves 21 through 40 are report repeated till what? That's well, that's ridiculous. Why would you want to repeat the same level for that many times? And what what was with the number? Why did they choose that number to quit on? And uh, all right, speaking of quitting, uh, you don't have to quit. We're gonna skip all of the free play stuff. As you can see, there were some collectible stuffs back there. We're gonna skip that for now and head on over to the joust area, which is on the right side. And uh, look at that, we have to switch on over to the super speed. There are some pressure sensitive pads. Looks like a series of like Dance Dance Revolution games or something. But uh, yeah, and this does take a few attempts for me. So I, you will see an edit here in a second. I do attempt and fail once. And I realize that box is in my way on the far right. So we can destroy that box with a butt slam, which we did. And we found it to be rather helpful in getting all four of those. But you have to get all four of those green lights lit at the same time. Once you do, the box, the big, big box, falls down and reveals a second jouster. And uh, they smash into each other and drop into pieces. And those pieces build up into another arcade cabinet control panel there. So we're going to go ahead and walk up to that bad boy. And hey, a little uh, tip for you. If your arcade machine is not close to you, simply lift it up off the toy pad and place it right back down. And it'll appear right next to you. And uh, all right, we uh, kind of got the clue. And I already told you that this is the joust area. And for some reason, my button to activate it wasn't showing up the little icon. But I went ahead and pressed it, and it worked anyway. So if you run into that, feel free to just press the circle or the B button, whatever it is for you. And hopefully, it'll mount up, and you'll get to get your joust on. Look at that. I love the Lego jousters with the Lego ostriches. That's pretty sweet, if I'm being honest. But uh, all right, make sure you press that Start button on the game. Or I guess it's Options for us these days. But uh, depending on your console, that might change. And uh, this is just a matter of spamming the old X button and then trying to steer clear of uh, being stepped on. Tired of being stepped on. Tired of being stepped on. All right, look at that. Uh, so the goal here is to simply land on their heads. It's kind of like Mario Brothers. You know, you got to bounce on the old Goomba's heads. And uh, oh, yeah, did I mention picking up those eggs gives you some nice pointage as well? So. Um, yeah, I uh, already have 800 points, and look at that. I did one more little, uh, <laughs> I guess made, I made him a butt face. I sat right on his head, and uh, boo you shout. I got that 1,000 points, and I moved on because I don't want to play that game anymore. Not right now, anyways. I don't want to waste your guys' time because, uh, you know, my jousting skills aren't what they once were. All right, did you know that Joust was released in 1982 and was one of the earliest arcade games to feature two-player cooperative gameplay? The whole game is based around armored knights riding ostriches jousting against enemies on giant buzzards. The idea was conceived from wanting to create a flying game that wasn't involved in space. I don't think I said the final part right, but I got the gist of it. Anyways, we're going to uh, drive around in the Spy Hunter like a crazy man and make our way down into the next area because that one is complete. So there's a few things going on here. There's no real specific order you need to do them in and other than the fact that there is a security camera that needs to be disabled before you can do some of it. But uh, we're going to go ahead and switch our abilities over to the heat ray or laser vision as they call it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and melt that gold tank up top, which takes out the old handles there too. And it actually frees this defender ship to go ahead and leave the caged area and fly about right up above us. So we're going to come back to that here in a, a few minutes. But we're going to make our way down the, the little stairs here. And although the uh, camera's queuing us to that strong wall there, we're going to go ahead and sneak off into the backside here. Because you can see there's quite a few blues. And I think there was, oh, yep, even a purple. We're getting close to that 200K. And uh, that's okay with us. But, uh, all right, so we're going to collect a few more studs, and we're going to watch out the my least favorite game or uh, part of the area is right here, the Super Sprint area. And uh, realistically, what we need to do is we need to uh, go invisible and sneak on by that camera and go into the next room. So I'm going to sip on the old invisibility juice and slide on through. Of course, you could put another character on the the pad and uh, do some cheating. I was, of course, just using the character and items that come with the level pack. And uh, in this new area, we find a couple of bad guys. We need to stomp them all down. Once they're all on their backs, they actually build up another arcade cabinet panel. So once that does its magic, uh, we'll go ahead and move hard. Watch how lazy I am. Instead of going over to the far left corner and hopping on my arcade. Oh, no, that's right. This one. This one I play music. Oh, nope. That's right. I did. I was lazy. There is one where I play musical. Oh, no, it is right here. <laughs> They're all one and the same. I tried multiple times to get onto that cabinet, and I could not. I kept hopping in Spy Hunter. But eventually I get it. Third time's the charm. You know, Lego games, that rule of three seems to always be the case, even for me. 
All right, we've loaded up on in, and it's Gauntlet. Ooh, I love this one. Elf needs food badly. I don't know why that particular phrase was such a big part of my childhood, but it actually has a little bit of influence on which character I chose. As you can see, I chose the elf. All right, oh, speaking of food, uh, it tells us right off the bat that uh, elves sometimes need food. And look at that. Treasure is a 1,000 points. So treasure, we definitely want to pick up any treasure we can find along the way. And I love all these illustrations of these old-school classic Lego versions. You can see the Lego uh, elf and the uh, Valkyrie over on the left-hand side, as well as death and a couple of orcs. And I don't know what that talk about, dragon or something? All right, so let me point something out to you guys here. Now, first of all, you don't get very many points for killing these baddies, at least the ghosts. I, I didn't really check the other scores, but it looks like you get 10 points per. And uh, luckily for us, there's actually, you can do some farm in here and get your mo the majority of your points by just simply uh, kind of uh, moving to the right, letting a couple of those ghosts spawn, and then move to the left. Now, I get a little bit uh, risky here in a minute. Look at that. Ooh, elf needs food badly. And I placed a couple of coins in, which uh, for us, I believe it was the triangle button. And uh, so I, I got a little bit more health now. I'm not too worried about that. I got 2,200, which uh, should do me good for the rest of this. And uh, as you can see, I'm just, again, just milking it here, taking advantage of these ghosts. But I make a move. I make a strong move here. And I go in and I take out the little nests. But, you know, and that's one thing that, that always kind of bothered me about. This is one of my favorite games of, of the old school. Don't get me wrong. I love this game. And I love going to Wonderland, the old nickel arcade, and having three of my buddies. And, you know, we always had to fight over who was getting to play with who. But, uh, you know, playing in the arcade with buddies, co-op, that's where my co-op day started. And look at that. I got, I got the, uh, the medal to move on. But, um, yeah, fun times, love it, and I will be playing some of this on the side, and, you know, maybe I'll do some streaming, maybe, may, you know, I don't do enough streaming these days, and, oh, rule breaker, but uh, maybe I'll do some streaming of me just going crazy on all these retro games and see if you guys are into that or not. All right, what do you got to say, old man? Probably shine some wisdom on us. All right, did you know that Gauntlet released in 1985 featured drop-in, drop-out gameplay for up to four players? Hey, I was just talking about that. With four people playing at the same time, it was seen as the answer for struggling arcade manufacturers to fill their pockets. I, I didn't, I don't know what the rest of it said, but... All right, in the corner before leaving, smash that box. As you can see, it's kind of the power box to that security camera, which now that that's not effective, we can actually get all strong. We can pump, 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 pump it up, or as our good friend Cartman likes to say, beefcake, beefcake. You guys, any of you guys remember those old South Parks, the old uh, beefcake? Anyways, all right, uh, smash down the wall and build up the pieces into a ramp. And check this out. We're going to ramrod right in. Oh, look at that. Booyaka show and defender down. Once that guy crashes, we're going to go ahead and get up close. And I don't think you actually need to make any contact with it. I think it just explodes and rebuilds itself. But you know what? You might have to. But uh, we're going to hop on and ride this time. We're not being lazy. We're going to ride it on all the way over. And look at that defender. All right, this was also another one of my favorites. There was actually a, a version, uh, kind of a, uh, well, it was, it was a Star Wars game, and it was kind of a knockoff of this, or, or vice versa. I'm not really sure which one came out first, but I'm pretty sure Defender did. But uh, again, love the little, uh, the little uh, side pieces there, little drawings. Well, that was hard for me to say. I was trying to come up with a cool word, but drawing will have to do. All right, so a couple things going on here. Obviously, you are a defender, and you can see I defended this guy from being flown out. And you actually get mega points for saving these guys. So I um, highly recommend not just trying to shoot the bad guys. As you can see, I'm, oh, I'm on my last guy. And you know what? I lucked out because I thought I was going to have to edit out a bunch of mistakes on these games because some of them are pretty hard, including super or sprint. I guess it's not even super sprint. But, um, yeah, I ended up looking out. I didn't have to edit any uh, mistakes out. I actually got them all on my first try. So not to rub it in, but I guess technically they weren't my first try because I played and got all the way to Rampage, and then the game froze, and I had to play it again. So I did have some practice. But, hey, when Defender was released in 1981, many people were cautious of its complicated control seam and highly difficult difficulty level. <laughs> Ultimately, it was these elements that made the game such a huge success as it helped stand out from the rest of the boring games in the arcade. Again, I was just kind of improvising at the end. All right, we need some more heat ray. So we're going to go ahead and drink the old. That must be a spicy drink. I don't know if that's like a spicy V8 or uh, maybe maybe it's some fire water. I don't know what it is, but uh, we go ahead and melt those two gold items on the right and rebuild the bricks into. Oh, look at that. It's a stop gate. I don't know why he would bother stopping. Oh, he doesn't. He rams right through it, creating some more bricks. 
uh, that I guess, no, you know what it is? It actually took some health off the old fellow there, and uh, we're going to need to go ahead and go into the left-hand side, and I highly recommend, there's multiple places you can be free of being run over by that guy, but, uh, uh, you know, standing on this little uh, fencing here might help out. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and pull out my heat ray one more time by drinking my spicy V8. Look at that. Uh, that's, a, that's a spicy guacamole. I, I don't know. I don't know why. I, I don't know where guacamole falls into it. But, anyways, we're going to go ahead and melt. We carve out the old tube inside there, which was also a fun game. It's amazing how many Midway games I really enjoyed as a kid. You know, I was a Nintendo Entertainment System kid or an NES kid. Um, you know, so a lot of these games were all big hits, you know. Uh, anyways, uh, we're building it up, and again, like I said, this is actually my least favorite of all of them. But uh, the guy's going to pull in for a pit stop here, and wait for it, wait for it. Guess what, buddy? You look like a floor jack. It really is what it looks like. It looks like a floor jack with a fancy lid on it. But uh, all right, you can see he builds up once he lands on that uh, pit, that is. He builds up into another arcade cabinet panel. We're going to run over there. And oh, it is Super Sprint. I was right. And uh, again, that icon not popping up for us, but we know that it's that cycle or B, depending on which console you're playing on. And uh, there's the control scheme, and you know what? I wasn't paying attention to how what my score needed to be, but I'm going to press that start button, and I'm going to get to rolling. All right, easy track. Uh, you know, a, a couple of viewers have actually said that this is one of their most uh, hated uh, mini games of all of this, and they suggest that if you don't beat this level, do not advance, restart, and replay this level, as this level is much easier than any of the other levels. So if you're having troubles, the control scheme is backwards. If you're asking me, turning left is kind of turning left at one point, but for the rest of the track, it's not turning left. It's very unfluid controls. You know, TT Games might think about refining these because it's pretty frustrating and nobody's gonna play this. Anyhow, I get the checkered flag, luckily enough, and I get that bronze metal, and I'm going to continue exploring the arcade because I want nothing more to do with that. And, uh, you know, stick with it. As you know, you have to complete that little mini game in order to complete this level of the level pack. And, uh, oh, look at that. We got green, and green means go. But before we do, but wait, we're going to go talk to this old man over here and see what kind of wisdom he can share with us. And look at this. I'm rolling out, and I'm like, oh, yeah, i got to talk to him. All right, what's he got for us? What's he got? Let's see if I can read this one. Oh, the arcade machine for Super Sprint released in 1986 featured three wheels as a way of controlling the cars and also allowed three players to race against each other at the same time. If the player managed to reach race 85, uh, we'll never know because I didn't read it. That's that's a bummer. <laughs> Hopefully you got to read it. It's kind of hard when it's moving around like that too, I got to be honest. But uh, All right, we have officially rode the elevator down and we are in a completely new area. And it looks like there is some more shenanigans going on, including some... Uh, glass needing to be broke but uh, we see a switch over on the right we're gonna flip it and it actually cues us to a little cutscene here it actually loads up the power real quick and then we're gonna uh, use our arcade cabinet or our m arcade machine I guess is what they label it as on the packing um, and we're gonna mount up and see what's cracking here so it looks like we've got ourselves rampage oh oh look out boys and girls <laughs> Ooh, loading. All right, so again, this is another one of my favorites. The Midway for the win if you're an 80s kid. But uh, all right, we're just going to go ahead and choose George. I know Ralph's in there too, but we're going to go ahead and just go with the old, uh, the big brown fuzzy bear. No, I'm just kidding. He's an angry gorilla, and he's going to smash and grab everything in sight. All right, you could definitely spend a lot of time doing various things like eating people that walk along the ground or climbing up and eating them in the buildings. But uh, the goal here really is just to smash the bottom of the building as much as possible and get it to fall down. And uh, we, uh, you know, we grab a few guys. Ooh, that's another... That's also very spicy. But uh, all right, uh, once you take all three of the buildings down, it actually takes us into another cutscene. And uh, although this level was the story mode, it wasn't very cutscene intensive. And uh, as it crumbles down, my voice will, uh, well, yeah, disappear. Ha <laughs> ha, bronze medal and ooh, question marks. Let's go ahead and see what's ahead. <laughs> Huh? 
<laughs> Woohoo! All right, new high score trophy achievement, or as we like to say around here, booyah kashaw! All right, we got a handful of studs, as promised. Uh, way more than needed, absolutely way more than needed for that uh, you know, requirement for the rule breaker. We got all those and more. And uh, what else did we get? We didn't get any mini kits. We did not save any mini figs in peril. But uh, we know there's lots more ahead. And uh, we'll come back and take this on here shortly. Uh, we're getting to the point where we pretty much have all of the characters needed in order to complete these levels. So uh, check out our all mini kits playlist if you're into uh, completing this all. So, hey, that's going to wrap it up, though, for LEGO Dimensions Midway Arcade Level Pack New High Score Trophy Achievement. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and found it mildly entertaining or midwayly entertaining. <laughs> and, uh, hey, if you guys have any questions or requests, simply head on over to Facebook, Twitter, comment, vote, subscribe down below as we love hearing from you guys and we try to uh, interact as much as possible. And, of course, HappyThumbsGaming.com is available for your viewing pleasure. And we got product and gaming reviews as well as trophy achievement guides. So uh, we got one for this game. We got one for LEGO Marvel Avengers. We got we got it for a bunch of them. So uh, if you're the type that likes to print out and check off your stuff or maybe you just have a simple question about a, a trophy achievement, go ahead and check out our guides as you will find the answers you need. All right, for me, that's going to do it. As always, until next time. Rampage. So yeah.